We'll start with Jake. Broke versus poor. How do you how do you get yourself out of that? Uh, how, do, how do you get yourself into the good column, uh, the, the more productive column? I was, I was actually thinking about something. So I'll, I'll add it in here because it like indirectly kind of answers the question. One of, one of the kind of things that motivated me to make a lot of money is having an end goal. So there's also this saying, like, I think a, link, a lot of your situation depends on perspective. I heard the guy say, so he, got, he went from being a millionaire to being broke again. And in the broke kind of period, somebody interviewed him and be like, hey, what's the story here? And then he said, the only thing that keeps me going is because I have some perspective. He's like, I'm not broke. I'm in between fortunes. And he constantly tells himself that. And this whole mindset and perspective shift is absolutely massive. And then also, I think when people make money in, in, in the real world, I think everything feels extremely meaningless if you don't start with the end in mind, like what we talked about in the beginning. Like I started getting really motivated about making money once I understood this concept of escape velocity. So what escape velocity actually is, is when you make enough money where the yield of your money starts funding your basic lifestyle expenses. So let's say you spend three grand a month on lifestyle. And let's say you're able to generate 15, 15% a year for easy math. Let's say you're able to um, like generate 15% a year off of stable coins in crypto and some kind of DeFi thing. Well, then you do 3,000 3, times 12. This is not accounting for taxes, so whatever you're at. So that's 36,000 a year divided by 0.15. That would mean that you want to have 240,000 in stable coins to be able to generate three grand a year to cover your basic lifestyle expenses. So your basic first kind of target for escape velocity could be 240 grand in cash. And that could be starting with 10 grand in crypto, experiencing a 24x, and then having 240 grand. So there's multiple ways of getting there. But I think if anybody, if everybody kind of writes down, okay, what is my escape velocity target? Because Richard Hart was the one that shared this, and it's actually, it's so damn true, is when you're, when you don't have a lot of money, you're stupid. Like from like a general, like um, just brain functioning kind of position, you're generally lower IQ when you're broke. Because in one of his interviews, like it's one of his least watched interviews from Richard, but let's say you're sitting in a, in, in a room and you see the ceiling fall down over there and there and there, even though you're in an interview and you're in the world, you're actually doing something. You're, you don't know when the roof might fall on you because you don't have enough money to survive if something does happen. So you're constantly focused on survival instead of growth. And once you kind of hit that escape velocity point, you get out of the survival mindset and you can kind of start thinking long term. And then Alex Hermosi was the one that really said this is you can, you can see how far somebody will get in life in terms of wealth and money by how and what kind of time horizon they talk. If they talk about a month, they're not probably in the best financial situation. If they talk about a week, they're probably wrecked. If they talk about a year, a little bit better. If they talk about decades, they're probably going to be either nine figures or billionaires. So, and I think the only way you can talk about longer time horizons is if you get out of the survival mindset. So one exercise everybody can do is write down, okay, what is my dream lifestyle? How much does it cost every month? And then reverse engineer, how big should my portfolio be to get to this amount of yield every month to fund my lifestyle expenses? And then you have a very tangible target. Because I remember when I was like in the startup world, like actually coding, for me, it felt like I'm learning a skill because I knew I was going to do something with coding in the future. I was learning a skill, so it never, it never felt useless. It never felt passionless. I'm like, this is a step towards X. I'm not just doing a job to do a job. I'm doing, I'm, I did door-to-door -door sales because I was like, I need to learn the sales skills to get to where I need to get to. So the money I made in door-to-door -door was like a negligible, almost nothing. But I was like, I'm learning a skill to get to X. And then coding, I'm learning a skill to get to X. Marketing, I'm learning a skill to get to X. And then I think if you can go to life with the end goal in mind, everything you do, you do with passion because you know exactly where you're going. Depression comes when you don't, when you no longer see the future. But when you see the future, you get excited because you know everything you do now has a purpose. You're building towards something. And there's, there was a study, like the people who have goals are I think three or four times more likely to actually achieve their goals than people who never write down their goals. And I caught, I caught myself in this. Like in the last three months, I haven't written down my goals. And I'm like, wait, this is like first principles. Why am I not doing this? And now I write, write down mm -hmm. my goals every day again. And it's just stupid What if you stuff put your goals on your t-shirt? What if you put your goals on your t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. And yeah. And then um, <laughs> Alex Ramosi was also the one that said, uh, do the boring work and then we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught.